I'm the public safety director also of the California Capital Air Show in Sacramento, so I get about 100,000 people that come to our air show <laughs> in a two-day period. Um, technology has come a long way. We, we're in our 12th year with the air show, and so for that venue, the technology is just, I mean, I started with six cameras 12 years ago, and now I have up to 80 that I can utilize. And, and the complexity of not having incident command on site, incident command is at another location. Uh, when you think about the power of a desktop computer connected to the internet in the palm of your hand and uh, what that can, can bring to us, what, what kind of rich experiences that, uh, that we can learn, learn and share from that. Um, but of course, security has to be an important aspect of that. And especially because, again, you talk about evolving. Bill painted a picture of uh, the smartphone evolving into the internet of things and all these connected devices and, and how the uh, vectors of attack are going to be increasing with those multitude of devices out there so security uh, in these devices is, is critical and uh, I'm really proud that um, my company is, is really focused on making sure we have security built into our devices not something that we try to put in as an afterthought uh, because you know we all see it that you know when you have a new uh, technology or capability, there's a rush to create functionality and get products to market and we don't want to see security and, and privacy also be an afterthought. Um, so I think as these products are evolving, you know, it, it uh, behooves us all to ensure that they uh, have that security built in. One of the things we did, I think, very well is we talked about our philosophy in community policing that public safety is a shared responsibility. So what we did is that we brought everybody as a force multiplier, that everybody had a responsibility to report something if it seemed out of the ordinary or if it seemed suspicious. The other component to that too, I guess, for the balance is signage. Having signage out that says this property, this office, this door, this corridor, this hallway, this, this field, whatever it may be, is monitored 24 hours by video. Technology has gone so fast that, you know, things are immediately, it seems like, put out uh, on the, uh, you know, out in the cyber world. And once it's out there, you can't get it back for them. Let's say you're walking down the street and someone puts a gun to your head and they rob you and they take all your money. Um, and you have to go through and now get your ID, get your driver's license, and, you know, what a pain, all right? And that's a very scary crime, too, because, you know, they had a gun to your head. But you want someone to be sitting at a computer right now and maybe in another country and they just stole your identity and took all your money from your bank account. And you don't even know it. Part of what's underlying that and, and what's going to make that a reality is 5D networks. And um, you know, right now we're at 4G LTE, 5D networks are coming in the next few years. And although these are the next generation, they're really more than that. Uh, these networks are, are going to be um, supporting a large diversity of devices that are at unprecedented scale and speed and complexity. When we talk about things, is that it's happening so, as everybody said, just so very quickly. Um, how do you keep up and what is the money to do that? And, and one of the things is, you know, the bad guys out there, they don't have a budget. Okay? They just go out and steal more money and, and get it or however they get it and, and they get whatever they need. We all, uh, um, for either private or government sectors, we all have a budget. Okay, so how do we keep up with all this next latest and greatest and to make sure that all of the technology that we spent millions of dollars that work very well can integrate into all these other things? Otherwise, we continue to be behind the eight ball.